Hi everyone, and welcome to the brand new series of Aesthetics Unlocked. I'm your host, Vicky Hooker, and on this episode, we're in conversation with Shannon Killograph, editor and content manager of Aesthetic Journal. So join us as we unlock the industry together. Hello everyone, and welcome back to our third series of Aesthetics Unlocked. I am your host, Vicky Hooker, and we've got a new setup today. We're actually recording, we're filming. We've never done that before, so... <laughs> bear with us as we are trying to adapt but we have eddie and mark again hello guys they, hello, haven't, they, hello, they haven't they haven't changed that though have they me and no. mark yeah the old guard is still <laughs> we're here. still there Absolutely. We, you take the best out of the best and leave the rubbish behind but well, we're yeah. still here there was a conversation though when we started putting the cameras on and we we're like do we use them still do we yeah yeah no, i'm all for natural <laughs> yeah. You definitely as have a long face. As thing can filter afterwards. We're yeah. all good. You definitely have a face for right. radio. <laughs> no question. <laughs> <laughs> but lovely to see you. Welcome back. And, and the summer's done. Summer's done. And, and what a great summer it was. It was. We we are. Um, I'm quite excited at the moment because obviously we've got a fantastic guest who Vicky will introduce in a minute. But we. Um, we're definitely seeing a lot more activity in the market and the number of inquiries has gone through the roof, hasn't busy it? Busy market, busy mm. summer, busy... I'm glad to have the team back. So we yeah. can now really, really fire into the mm. autumn. Busy event season coming up. The team are fired up. New websites launched, of course. Mm. So new websites, great. Um, and I think, yeah, it's, uh, I never thought we'd be sick of the sun, but yeah, bring on the autumn and let's see what's... Uh, you want more rain? What's ahead. You want more rain? I'm, I'm, I'm a Brit, of course I want more rain. I'm used to the rain. It's getting too hot, yeah. My background's Where's Irish. The this one. Where, where's, <laughs> where's the snow? Rain? <laughs> what a great segue. Go on, who have we got today? I'm excited about this one. Come on. So today we have Shannon Kilgaraf with us. Uh, she is the editor and content manager of Aesthetic Journal, and we... We're flipping it on you. Usually you're interviewing people and we've got you today and we're interviewing you. So Yeah, so Vicky, Mark and Eddie, thank you so much for having me today. And Pleasure. you know what? I am a bit nervous because usually Don't I'm the nervous. one uh, I'm the one doing all the questions and the listening mm. and, and throwing the challenging questions out and not the one being interviewed. So well, we, we are we are the, the happy ones. We are yeah. the it, it's <laughs> lovely really to see you, Shan. Look, you've got I, I've got to ask, and I'm pleased, I hope you don't mind. You've got that lovely accent come on where, where is that australian yes. of course isn't yes it? of but course no it's not a kiwi although i am half kiwi um it's not south african um i am born and bred in australia i actually grew up on a cattle station in the middle of australia um wow. so wow yeah. so so in the center yeah so not if you got a dartboard and tried to hit the bullseye and pictured that as australia that's where i grew up so wow yeah so um that's where it all began um so you love sun you were, you were talking about the before, <laughs> I was just so the last completely... Month, it's been amazing for you. Honestly, yeah, yeah. I cannot get enough of the, of the sun. Um, yeah. It's been great, although, you know, I do like a bit of green grass and I feel like it has been a little bit dry. So, mm. yeah. um, you know, it has been it has been a beautiful, beautiful summer, though, so mm. it's been, been absolutely great. So, well done, UK. <laughs> <laughs> Got something right. Once in four or five years, yeah, it's good. So, what brought you over to uh, Little Old Britain? So um, I've always wanted to, um, you know, move around the world, travel and work in different countries. So um, I did a bachelor, of, a bachelor of Journalism and Creative Writing at uni. I went to the University of South Australia um, and then I kind of just, you know, finished work. Uh, sorry, finished uni and worked for a little while and then saved up to go overseas. And I came over to Europe and did about eight months travelling. And I just thought, you know what, I'll stop over in London for a year or two and just see how it goes. Yeah, and we, just, we usually stop know. over for a day when yeah. we travel to Australia. I mean, I will go to Singapore yeah. for a day. You stayed for a year. Yeah, exactly. So I thought, oh, I might be here for a so year or two. It was literally long, short term. Let's yeah. think about it, see what happens. Absolutely. And yeah, and um, you know, seven years later, I'm still here, still, still here. working for Aesthetics and yeah. absolutely loving it. London's so. not a bad city, is it? No, London's no, it's it's oh, it's a magical city. It's There's amazing, so much um, going I'm on. I'm under planet. It's an amazing city. Yeah. yeah. And, and do you mind me asking what, what, um, very quickly, because I don't want to dominate this, this session because there's so many things we want to talk about, but what is the aesthetics market like down under in Australia? Is it, is it, a, is it, uh, as, is it behind where the rest of Europe is or England and Europe is? Is it in front? Is it more innovative? 
and obviously got a smaller population, I get that. So Yeah, yeah. So it's an interesting question because actually I've never worked in the Australian um, aesthetics market. I've only ever done the UK. Oh, okay. So yeah. I'm a real, you know, expert in the UK market, I'd say. But when it comes to the Aussie market, I am a bit more of a novice. Yeah. Um, however, what I would say is that, you know, it is a fact that um, per capita Australians have a huge um, interest in cosmetic surgery, non-surgical treatments. Um, as a culture, we're very, you know, we're always outdoors. We're, yeah. we're wanting to look and feel our best we're a nation of people who love being outside so you know and it's hot so we've always got our clothes off and got our bikinis on and things mm. like that so mm. we do pride ourselves in, in our in the way we look so yeah. the industry over there is very popular and i would assume that the the, the skin industry because yes. obviously yeah. the biggest damage to skin is UV and, and absolutely and yeah so growing up we had this um, campaign called um, the slip slop slap I'm not sure if you guys have heard of it well, I mean it's new on me yeah but we're supposed so, um, to learn something every day so this is <laughs> <laughs> this is yeah so I mean you know we are literally um, ingrained to cover up um, with hats shirts and wear sunscreen uh, all the time um, and there was this really cute campaign you should look it up uh, with this little um, bird that goes around and sings a song called slip slop slap so you know <laughs> Um, it's, it's really cute, uh, but yeah, it's a, it's you know obviously sun safety is huge in Australia because of the the sun and the the high rates of melanoma and things like that. So, but what I would say is something I learnt whilst coming over here and working in the industry is the importance of uh, of sun protection for aging. Because I grew up thinking you know you you use sun protection for for preventing burns and preventing skin cancers, but moving over here, I'm now using it every day when it's in winter just to help you know do that little bit of extra yeah, bit to prevent absolutely. aging. So, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Probably where we've gone wrong, we don't use enough creams. We, we, we can change. We, can, we, we'll, we'll embrace. We said this is about learning, so we, we will embrace that. Those of, Indirect. You, <laughs> those of you that are actually watching this can see that we split the room to young, good looking, old, and haggard. <laughs> well, I would say experienced and wise. <laughs> so I remember talking, yeah, I've spoken to Shannon a few times this year, and we. The first thing I really remember about Shannon when I sort of spoke to her properly was at, at, at the Aesthetic Awards in, in March uh, of this year, which was, you know, obviously you know, that was your crowning moment, if you were, you know, you stepped up on stage in front of 900 people, which is fairly daunting, but you just literally took it in your stride. And I've said this to you before, I'm going to say it to everybody now. That was a moment, I think. Was that a truly pinnacle moment for you or was, was becoming the editor? Or was that sort of wider recognition? What, what stood out about those two? Oh, thank you. That's very kind. Um, that moment, I think it was kind of a pinch me moment. Um, you know, I had been editor for a little while, um, but that was just kind of the moment where I feel like it really sunk it's in. Real, yeah. And I and I was absolutely terrified, I must say. <laughs> you hit it well. It was amazing. Yeah, um, we were yeah. sort of on the right, you know, so we were sort of coming in profile, but you just literally stood up tall, proud. And everybody was just was bought into yeah. it. It was fantastic. You wouldn't have known it was your first rodeo, so. Oh, well, thank you. And I think I've just obviously had so much support from the industry. Um, so that really helped, I think. Um, and it was a magical moment and, you know, a magical event um, with the Aesthetics Awards that year because it was the first time we yep. had come all together again since COVID. Mm. So, yeah, it was very exciting. Yeah. Slash mm. a bit of daunting, but, I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, next, so, next, so next year we're expecting... Bigger and better, better. and you know, yeah. more na you know, even more relaxed. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so, so the these community. exhibitions, though, these conferences have been going on for a little while. What have you, what what have you changed with uh, under your stewardship in terms of CCR and the aesthetic awards? What, what what's your vision? Because um, I've we've been going to these for many a year. We've actually won a couple of awards. So you I'm have, proud you of have. that. But what do you do? What do you? Where do you want it to go? And what have you changed? to keep it relevant? So it's a good question. I would say, um, you know, what I tend to focus on is wanting to bring the whole community together mm. in that kind of 360 approach where we have um, fantastic events that people love going to um, with exceptional content that they can continuously go to each on each year and learn something new. Mm. Um, if they can come to our events and just pick up one little nugget of information that I, that 
that I feel like I've done myself proud and I've done the industry proud. Um, and, you know, in terms of the journal as well, it's making sure that the industry has that touch point every single month. Um, you know, we're about to head into event season, which I'm super excited about because mm. there's some fantastic events coming up in the industry. But, you know, the journal really does um, ensure that people are getting, you know, the latest news, updates, clinical insights, um, business tips month on month and making sure that they're staying connected to their community. Um, as you know, so many clinics work in isolation. So it's really important that, you know, people are receiving the journal every month, um, coming to the events and making sure that they are a part of the community. Yeah, I mean, it's a big challenge, isn't it? One of the mm -hmm. things we've um, experienced over 25 years is that the, the practitioners, I mean, I love every one of them, and their practice knowledge is second to none. Mm. But for many, their business knowledge is like all of us when we're starting out. Mm. Where do you go for practical advice? You can Google it. Of course you can. Aesthetic Business Conference. ABC. What a <laughs> segue there. There's coming up I've heard yeah. of. What was it yeah, called? ABC. Uh, we, 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 will, we will talk about that, uh, I think, a little bit later. But, of course, what I'm trying to think is, is that... The, is it the educational part that keeps these events and what you do and what we're trying to do with ABC? Um, is that the most important thing or is it all about just getting as many exhibitors in a room and making a shed load of money. No, I think, I mean, you know, everyone thinks it's just getting lots of exhibitors in a room and making a shit load of money, as, yeah. you, as you rightly put it, Eddie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it is a bit more than that, I think. Um, you know, these events, there's not just one reason you go to these events, and it, it's very much dependent on, on you as a practitioner, I think. So, mm. you know, one of the first things is to, you know, you're working in isolation, a lot of you. You yeah. need to make sure that you're staying on top of industry developments, what's going on, what's new, what's out there, what techniques your peers are talking about or utilising, um, and that's going to benefit you and your practice. Mm. Um, and no matter how long you've been working in the industry for, whether it's two years or 25 years, there's always something that you don't know. Yes, um, yes, I so, agree that. so the content, of course, is is absolutely crucial. Yeah. Um, there are so many fantastic practitioners and business um, minds out there, um, mm. and bringing them together at these events um, is, is absolutely amazing. You know, you can go to these events and you can just absorb so much information um, and whilst you're there you can speak to all of the companies in the industry essentially mm. at an exhibition um, you can kind of go in there and spend place, two days it? and yeah. spend one it's one place yeah. um, mm. and you know in terms of I know these you know practitioners are busy they're mm. treating patients day after day hour after hour then they're you know going home and looking over accounts and trying to run their business side of things mm. um, so in terms of time saving, to be able to go to an event and be able to kind of look at, OK, here's the top five laser companies um, all at once. Show me your laser um, or, you know, what products are out there. It's, it's quite convenient. Yeah, agreed. Um, I think the other thing is that a lot of people kind of forget about is the networking opportunities yeah. at these events. Um, I think we all realise that, you know, during COVID, being in isolation sucks. Yeah. Mm. It really does. You know, it's it's awful. And, it, you know, we can pick up the phone and we can do an Instagram live and that's all well and a good. Zoom. But, yeah, and you can do a Zoom. <laughs> but you know what? It's just not the same right. as seeing someone yeah. face to face. You build a connection with someone when you're, when you're in their presence, I think. Mm. Um, and, you know, just being able to have a network network in this industry is actually so crucial. Um, a lot of the things that I do in my role is just building networks. Um, and, you know, I can do my job so much easier when I have a strong network of, of people who to mm. work with and bringing people together. So, so moving on from that, Shannon, because um, I, if everyone doesn't know, I'm the event exec at Hamilton Fraser. So I'm in charge of the events as well. And I've noticed whilst working that after the pandemic, as you rightly said, like, the practitioners are actually that there, there's a want for the um physical events and people have realized after being stuck at home that there is nothing quite like face-to-face -face conversation or mm. having that opportunity to talk to people and network and learn from people and i i think that's also an overlooked importance of the events that mm. um mm just being in a room with like-minded people bringing everyone together with the same sort of mindset and want is is, is really important and re it's something that mm. i think has pushed events up on people's criteria and like i the think last what, year. what you did with abc uh vicky was especially last year 
because another challenge for events is, of course, they're centralised, aren't they? So they're London-based, they're Manchester-based or whatever. And our client bank, your readership, your customer bank, we're nationwide. Mm. And what you did last year was that virtual part as well. So we had the physical event in London, um, which was well attended, but you also opened it up so that we got as many people who turned up on the day... D- w- dialed in, dialed in. I'm showing my age now, Mark. <laughs> who then logged on in a, on to an the virtual an analog phone? <laughs> <laughs> so these, these guys are looking at me, thinking, "What does dial in mean?" <laughs> but I think, I think, whereas you guys have the aesthetic journal, that's the sort of the hub, I guess, if yeah. you will, yeah. for your readers and your community, and we have like this podcast and we have um emails that go out but Mm. abc is our baby as such and Mm. having a virtual side which a lot of events have also adopted because you have to move on with the times not Mm. everyone can whether it be they're still worried about covid or just that they're a bit like you said practitioners are really busy they They always take time off yeah you can't go to every single event in the industry unfortunately although i do like to try yeah exactly (laughs) but then having an alternative for these people, whether that be the journal, whether that be a virtual event, yeah. the whole ownership of it, of actually learning more, being part of a community, being part of the networking mm. is, is... And, and the trust, yeah. mm. that you're going to a trusted source yes. for information. Let's do some shameless plugs. <laughs> this is what it's all about at the end of the day. So what's coming up? So, of course, coming up, we have a CCR London, which is very exciting. So that's mm. at the Excel on 13th and 14th of October. So that's going to be a brilliant event with, yep. you know, 3,500-ish uh, visitors. Mm. And tickets still available? Uh, so tickets, uh, yeah, they are. They're completely free, actually. So you can just go to the They're website. Completely free. They're completely free, yeah. Wow. Um, we do have some really, really great paid-for agendas. So we've got the Ace Group World Conference, um, which is Aesthetics Complications Expert Group World, yes. uh, yep. which is, well uh, you know, yeah, thank you, thank you. <laughs> there's a lot of acronyms in this industry yeah, you have too, to try and remember bad, yeah. um people love acronyms uh so yeah so you know that's gonna be fantastic and complications you know are on the rise um people are talking about them much more than they were when i started working for aesthetic seven years ago which is fantastic um so that's gonna be a really really good conference and um, we also have the isaps there which is um the surgical association um and we've also got dr tapan patel doing some fantastic live demos um, workshops as well so those are the paid for ones but lots of lots of things happening loads of sponsors exhibitors you guys are going to be there as well yeah, yeah. yeah. You've got We're a really lovely excited. brand new stand do you yeah can't, cool. wait, can't wait to roll that i saw the um I, I, I the images say, you know, of it my god in the last so in the last three years since i've been hf i've been to ccr twice it was my first show i went to where i was baptism baptism i was, was bamboozled <laughs> by everything <laughs> Um, but there was something immediately that, that just snared me, and I just thought, yeah, you know, there's something yeah, about this event. world. Mm. Then I've been to, you know, even through the pandemic, lots and lots of different events, but in, and even so, you know, the CCR last year, this it, CCR is my favourite event of all the ones I've been to. It's the, definitely the most energetic, it's the most alive. And I think, you know, that ability, as you've all touched on, to be face to face, you know, for us to see two, three, four hundred practitioners and clients to talk mm. to partners. We, as much as, you know, there is a, of course there is a commercial venture in this, we learn from it as well. Mm. Yeah. You know, we evolve our products and services mm. and packaging off the back of meeting people. Mm. And you can't do that on the screen. It's just, no, it's, I agree. You know, and that's a, maybe that's an old school approach, but old mm. and new school, we all agree that face-to-face is absolutely best. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm at BCAM this weekend, as it happens, so we're doing that comp, doing their comps. We've got a speaker panel to talk about insurance, which it looks like it's going to get some interest. We've got a stand there, and then through through till the end of November with other. I, I think it's going to be a fantastic season, yeah. and everybody is saying the same thing about getting face to face. Well, I think to be honest, the whole point of the aesthetic industry is uh, about people's 100%. faces. It's about people. <laughs> yeah. It's very true. So not actually, it's no. not. Like, and these are the opportunities to go yeah. and take with both mm. hands and go and meet people. And mm. and when's the Aesthetics Conference? So ACE uh, yep. is on the 11th, sorry, the 10th and the 11th of March. Yep. And then 
as you guys know, uh, this year was the first year that we ha- co-located the Aesthetics Awards as well. So the awards will be after the that second a, day of Ace long, again. That was a long day. Oh, you're <laughs> telling me? It was a really, really long night. Oh, well. It was a long day and night. <laughs> oh, the train back the next morning was uh, <laughs> slightly <laughs> numb, not, not quite. But up. a fantastic <laughs> night. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, it was a big night, but it was just absolutely unreal to have two days of learning and networking followed by the Aesthetics Awards just endorsing best practice yeah. and you know congratulating 100%. excellent it was just mm. absolutely amazing yeah, yeah. so and yeah, I, really I, loved, I loved uh, ace as well for the upper street it's just a brilliant brilliant venue oh yeah area. it's such yeah. a like yeah. lively absolutely. environment a part of london i love it there so mm. and when place. is abc aesthetics business conference abc is a month away it's mm. the 4th of october and we've still got a few tickets left we've for still that, got a it? few very limited so mm. i suggest if you want to come uh you get your tickets now uh we have a code hf15 that will get you 15 percent off if you do that only if you listen to, to this podcast only if you're an avid <laughs> listener podcast. and you can name all our guests but it's a great there's <laughs> a, a great <laughs> list of great list of speakers great list of topics Brilliant. slightly different to cc obviously which is a more exhibitionist so this is a mm. yeah, very much tailored yeah. around mm. information to help yeah. you on your new well, journey we've taken all the feedback from all our guests over the last few years and we've taken um we wanted we didn't want to do the same event that other other events are doing so the agenda is created to be a step-by-step guide of how to start your business from Mm. start to hopefully success that's what Mm. So but log business. on and buy all of these tickets. Sorry, yeah, no, but no, but business, um, you know, talks is so vital because, mm. you know, as you said before, the clinicians in this industry are fantastic at all the medical skills. Um, however, they do, you know, they, they haven't been taught the, the fundamentals yeah. of business. So, mm. you know, these sort of events really are crucial. Yeah, mm-hmm. and they link in together. So, you know, we would never want to step on the toes of CCR or yeah. aesthetics events. And that's what we want to look perfectly at the business side of it yeah because um, the longer the longer practitioners stay in business of course the better it is for everybody, better yeah. it is for everybody. Where, where do you just I, I'm, I don't know if I'm going to catch your question here actually are you going to take the gritty go do you go for the gritty <laughs> no no that's, I think <laughs> that's, that's, bring it on. I think that's <laughs> important Mark takes so, the hit if so you, this is <laughs> So, I, you know, we talk really, really favourably about events. And, I, you know, whether it's aesthetic events or you go to sports events or hot travel events, whatever it is. On, um, you know, there is an argument that says that maybe the event world is a bit saturated. You know, so, you know, so I've got two questions. So, one, do you personally think, not what the sets is, do you personally think that there is maybe too many events at the moment and into 23? And if there is, how do you think that you're going to evolve CCR and Good others questions. to cope with that, particularly noting you know, the cost of living crisis in the country at the moment, you know, financial impact on people. How mm. do we evolve? Or how does the sector evolve and, and your role in it? I think it's a, it's a really good question. Um, what I would Sorry. say firstly is, you know, to the first part of your question about, you know, is the market saturated? I mean, I don't personally think it's saturated. However, I do agree that, you know, the the coming months are going to be busy. Um, If you try to go to every single event that I've that I've seen on on the calendar, it's probably impossible. I don't think you'll get any money coming into your business because you won't be doing any treatments. (laughs) (laughs) So I think the first thing is and, you know, really consider why you're going to these events um you know what will you get out of it you know if you're a practitioner that's been in the industry 10 years and you've got a real big handle on on the business is it you know important to go to a a business conference where it's directed at those who are new to the industry probably not you might be better off going to something that's um looking at you know enhancing your you know injecting skills or Mm. um you know taking the next steps of your Mm. business or something so i would always say to people you know all of these events aren't there to go to every single one of them you know if you can then great Um, but I think there's also a thing called event burnout which you know at the end of events industry at the end of the events um, kind of calendar at the end of the year do some of you just go like oh gosh just I just can't go to another event yeah (laughs) and so I think you've got to you've got to manage that and and just Mm. be really cautious of going to the correct events um, that are going to benefit you your business um, and really pick and choose Um, and to your second question about you know how are we evolving events and making sure that you know it's relevant I would say that you know 
something that we really pride ourselves in is that we listen to the community. Um, you know, we always welcome feedback from, you know, all of our visitors, our exhibitors and all partners we work with because we want to make um, the not just the events industry but the whole aesthetics industry better. Um, you know, we want to see it evolve, we want to see it grow and it's growing at such a rate that, you know, it's our responsibility to help, you know, facilitate that. So I think listening to people, um, hearing feedback is the most important thing um, and just making sure we're on top of our game, you know, like um, making sure the content's um, interesting, making sure we're getting the speakers that we want, making sure the companies that um, are leading the way are attending and that we're, you know, using partnerships and things like that. So I think it is just about listening to your to your audience and going from there. Answer. Absolutely. Absolutely. Very Absolutely. And that was so, not yeah. planned, by the way. <laughs> that was a great answer. That was supposed to be the curveball question, wasn't so, it? <laughs> Shannon, I've got, I've, I've really got a, a question I want to ask because we all do events, don't we? And you're running them, we're running them, we're attending them. What's the top tips? Couple of top tips for organisations, uh, practices, manufacturers, distributors. Top tips to get the best out of a event. So, if you're someone who is exhibiting at an event, um, you know, I think there are loads of different things you can do. Um, but I would say there's three top tips I've got for you. The first one is to really focus on the aesthetics of your stand. Sta what it looks um, like. So what it yeah. looks like, yeah. Mm. I mean, we all love to see, as we know, beautiful things. Um, so you need to have a stand that stands out, says what you do, um, you know, and, and also just looks nice and tidy and approachable. I yeah, think. And great. being approachable mm. is so important. Um, the next is free stuff. Free stuff. People, People love, 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 love a freebie. <laughs> they love a freebie. Do you know how many times I go up to the stands and just to get a pen? Because often at these events I lose my pen left, right, and yeah, centre. Absolutely. And I always need a pen. Or if there's, you know, hand sanitizers or anything like that, I'm like, yeah. great. And that's an opportunity as well to talk to people. They're coming to your stand. Mm. Um, you know, it's, it's a really great way to do that, and as is competitions. But with they the same love sort that of well, yeah, yeah, same sort of concept. Um, but I'd say the most important thing is the people that you choose to represent you and your business and to have at the stand. So, so many people get this wrong where they, you know, might have a couple of people on the stand. They are so unengaged. They're chatting to each other or they're eating lunch or they are just not interested in being there. Um, and if you've got people on your stand who aren't interested in being there, then quite frankly, no one's going to be interested in talking to them. <laughs> so, good point, so yeah. you know, you have to really, really consider yeah. who who is there to represent you yeah. and your brand and how is that going to make your business come mm. across to potential and, clients. And I'd add to that, having done these for years, depending on the size of your stand, if you've only got a small stand, don't have 10 people yeah. in because people don't like to approach a crowded stand they don't want to wait there's so much competition in these exhibitions that if they have to queue they won't they won't <laughs> they'll end up so a couple of people and i think you said earlier vicky a, a few people out on the floor yeah welcoming yeah. people in yeah is and it? just having someone who is a, a welcoming sort of personality, yeah. you know. Approachable. and uh, Yeah, approachable, has a smile on their face. And they don't need to know the every intricate part of your business, but they need to have a basic understanding and be able to hold a conversation yeah. well with someone yeah. um, and be able to just kind of say and take initiative, you know, I'll be able to get the person that can answer these questions in more detail. That's so mm. important. Thank you. So I there you have I'll, it. I'll just sort of one, you know, one additional thought. So that approach, I think, is, is absolutely nailed, you know, nailed it. But the, um, the, for me, the key is to be exactly the same as that at four o'clock in the afternoon yeah. as you are at nine yeah. o'clock in the morning. People come in, they're bright, they're energetic. But a lot of people, you can tell by four, half past four, they're, they're watching the clock. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. there are still people there. And that, yeah, those people I agree. could be the difference to a successful yeah. day or Don't not. take yeah. the stand down at no, half past three. Be, yeah. still be, <laughs> and it's hard. They are, you know, you'll know as much as like, you know, you're walking, you're talking. They're it, long it, days, they really are. Long, yeah. They are long tight, days. But they are so beneficial yeah. if you just keep that, you know, demeanour all day. Yeah. You need to keep that energy up. And um, you said that people have more energy in the morning. That's not always the case for these conferences, Because of the they? night before. Because of the night before, <laughs> second exactly. Day, second day syndrome, <laughs> I, I get you on that. We're into our third okay. season of these podcast so so thank you for being um guest number one season three i think we actually this could be we could sell this couldn't we you know, <laughs> season <Make it> three <laughs> season three that's what they all say don't they yeah. um vicky you've got a brand new question yes for season three for season three so 
Our question to you is, who would you li- most like to interview out of anyone in the world? Oh, that's a really interesting question. Um, I think this is going to be really cliche. Um, but I'm a big kind of animal nature sort of fan, so I would love to just sit down with David Attenborough oh. and just oh, have a chat oh, with him. I know, oh, it's nice. classic, classic. I'm sorry it's not more controversial or interesting. I love him. Um, no, but he's amazing. Who doesn't love David Attenborough? Yeah. He's a uh, national treasure, isn't he? Yeah, yes. he is. But, I mean, if you're talking about someone in the industry, um, I would probably say I would love to sit down, and I actually met her the other day, but I didn't get to interview her for and, you know, really chat to her for long, but I would love to sit down with Gina and Alistair Carruthers, um, as you guys are known, are kind of, you know, the mm. founders yeah. of, of, of Botox, as mm. we know it, yeah. and are really kind of the mother and father of the whole aesthetics industry. So I think they're just, it's just a fascinating story. Um, yeah. And yeah, they're really interesting people. Yeah, 25 years on, they must have some amazing stories. thoughts and mm. stories to, mm. to where it is. Yeah, wow. What a great interview. Yeah. Thank you so much, Shannon, for joining us. Oh, well, thank you so much for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure. That that 20 odd minutes has flown by. So, (laughs) so, um, you know, thank you from on behalf of Hamilton Fraser and um, the partnerships that we've grown up um, that has benefited everyone. So thank you. Absolutely. And it's been a pleasure, you know, working with Hamilton Fraser, you know, through the journal um, and events, you know, these past years and looking forward to to future collaborations. I, I still think there's a big part to play for events. And the journal, in, you know, for, for years to come. Great. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us, and don't forget to rate and subscribe. For more on Shannon and Aesthetic Journal, please check out the description below, and head to hamiltonfraser.co.uk for more. We'll see you next time. Aesthetics unlocked. Unlocking the industry with the Hamilton Fraser Cosmetic Podcast.